Hello, good to see you guys again. Welcome, it's Coffee with the Ghost. Yep, it's me. Got some more good stuff to talk about today. Hopefully it'll help you as it has uh, helped me over the years as I, I and you continue to try to live a good life and, uh, you know, be respectful. Earn respect, right? You don't just get it, you earn it. Anyhow, we'll get into that here in just a second. But uh, first, of course, I gotta have some coffee. Uh, my coffee is, you know, very strong, like my opinion. And no, I don't just talk, well, it seems like I talk to myself half the time. Cooper, good dog, you're listening, good boy. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, coffee, uh, you know, it's strong like my opinion, and of course it got some creamer in there to make it sweet, just like me. All right, here we go, go lay down, buddy. Good boy, go lay down. Today we're gonna talk about being a father or a dad, okay, and how important it is. And study after study after study has shown that children suffer without a father in the house. Okay, it's easy to be a father. Hey, man, you're just having fun one night, right? And oh, oh, there we go. There's a child. Oh, I'm a father. Good for you. Are you a dad? What does that mean to you, being a dad? That means you're there caring for your child and your wife, your girlfriend, whoever, and doing the right thing, providing for them and protecting them, and hopefully setting a good example. Uh, as I said, there are so many studies, it's, uh, you just cannot dispute the fact that uh, kids who grow up without a father in the house suffer. In what way? Well, in every way. Uh, most, now I'm not gonna say that uh, most children who don't have a father in the house will leave a, a life of crime. But most, the vast majority of people who are in prison or do drugs or commit crimes did not have a father in their house. There's, a, you know, the father, as you probably know, and if you don't know this, you should, uh, a tremendous benefits to having a father in the house. Not somebody who's perfect, but somebody who is there, who is rock solid there every day, who provides, puts food on the table, and hopefully a hug and uh, sets a good example and provides some authority and some discipline in the house. Uh, <clears throat> I'll give you a few examples, okay? Uh, again, most of the people in prison or in jail did not have a father in their house when they grew up. And here, I'm not gonna pick on anybody, I'm just giving you facts, okay? When you see protests on TV for whatever the cause, look at the crowd, who is it? Who's in that crowd? The majority of them are young women, young white women, actually. Why is that? Well, here's why. Most, unfortunately, in the West, uh, most young ladies grow up with no family or no father in their house. So there's no, there's no man to look up to. There's no real man setting a good example. Then they go to school, grade school, high school. Who's the man? Well, the man is maybe the principal or the superintendent and uh, probably a gym teacher or coach. That's it. Uh, so very limited exposure to what a real man is. Then they go to college. And then who are the men? And a lot of the professors, what do they see? The men there are very, very liberal, left-leaning, God-hating uh, men who hate their country and uh, hate capitalism and hate everything. I'm sorry, but they hate everything that's good in this world. And then they teach that to these young ladies. And that's the first real exposure that young women have to men. And they're not real men. Any man who denies the existence of God, who hates their country, a country that has you know, made it possible for these guys to make a great salary and retirement and, and, uh, and authority, they hate that, I don't know why, and they teach that to these young ladies. And so then these young women grow up to model that behavior. They hate the country they live in. They can't explain why more often than not. And then they end up in these protests and, and it's just a wicked, wicked cycle that you see, you know, young men turning to a life of crime, producing children, not caring for them, not getting married, and then young women who grow up not respecting men. Okay, so there, uh, in, therein lies the problem, the problem of not having a father in the house. Um, 
I've got several Bible readings to share with you that, uh, you know, drive this point home. And then I'll, I'll have more thoughts for you. But uh, listen to this. This is straight from the Word of God, okay? First one from Psalm 103. Uh, As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. Ephesians, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Proverbs 20, the righteous who walk in his integrity, blessed are his children after him. Proverbs 13, whoever spares the rod hates his son, but he who loves him is diligent to discipline him. That doesn't mean uh, you know, spare the rod, spoil the child. That doesn't mean beat your child for every little misgiving. But hey, uh, when they're young, and I mean young, let them know immediately that you are the authority and the father figure who demands discipline and good behavior and swat them on the rear end if you need to. Mostly the boys, of course. The, the girls, that's a different story. I'm not real keen on, you know, uh, uh, corporal punishment uh, on... Uh, Girls, a a different story. Uh, Let's see, one more for you. Proverbs 22, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Uh, You teach them when they're young. I remember once a few years ago, more than a few years ago, my children were a little, uh, you know, uh, two, three, four years old. They were, uh, I was in a, a McDonald's play area, you know, a little playground in there and my one of my sisters was with me, and I, one of the kids was uh, misbehaving, psh, swatted him on the rear end, and oh, lo and behold, he behaved himself. Well, my sister, oh, how dare you? That's, that's abuse. I said, okay, let me ask you a question then. Uh, if they're too young, right? And she said, oh yeah, that's way too young to, you know, uh, discipline them, you know, putting a hand on their rear end like that. And I said, well, when is too young? Or when is it old enough to do that? Well, she didn't have an answer. The answer is when they're young and, uh, you know, when you uh, instill discipline in your children and respect for their father and respect for uh, good behavior, start that early. You won't have to do it so often as they get older. A good father doesn't have to beat his child every step of the way as they get older. No, do it a few times when they're young and they learn. And they, like it says in the Proverbs, they will carry that for the rest of their lives. A good father, you know, is not in that good man period. It's not gonna be influenced by the crowd and the culture because the culture does not care about you and your family. Don't follow the crowd and outside influences. Do the right thing, okay? Even if it's not popular. One of my favorite sayings is, uh, if something is uh, right and nobody's doing it, it's still right. If something is wrong and everybody's doing it, it's still wrong, okay? Don't uh, think about what the crowd likes and culture likes or even your family members and your friends. They're not their kids, okay? It's not their job to raise your children. Do the right thing. You know what the right thing is. And, you know, I've got a message for you guys. And some of you guys, you know, this may apply to you. And you know, my, my uh, response, if you don't like what I'm about to say, uh, you know, I, I don't care. <laughs> I'm just giving you facts here, okay? Um, when you are a, uh, you have children in the house. Let's say you're living with your girlfriend, okay? You love her. You've been with her for how long? Months? Years? How long? When are you going to do it, man? When are you going to do this? Get one of these. Get one of those. Come on, man. It only, it's, it's very easy to do. You've already, you already committed to her. You're living with her. You're enjoying her company. It's time to make the commitment in real life. Take her, go see the preacher, the priest, even the justice of the peace. Go do it. Put the ring on, okay? And for those of you guys who are engaged, and I see this a lot, I have to laugh. You've been engaged. How long? You, when, when's the uh, wedding date? I ask him, and they'll say, "Well, you know, we're, that's uh, we're still working on that. We're going to play on that. That's in the future." How long you've been engaged? Well, for four years now, or two years. Well, how long are you going to wait? 
you're already wearing a ring. You're wearing a wet, you know, wet, uh, engagement ring. Come on, step it up. Be a man, okay? A man doesn't just sleep with a woman. A man doesn't just make a baby. A man takes responsibility for that baby and the relationship with that woman. Be a real man. A real man doesn't talk and own nice cars and fancy clothes or even a big house. That doesn't really matter. Possessions don't mean anything in the end. What means, what really has meaning is, you know, being committed to something. Your job, your mortgage, yeah, yeah, that's that's commitment, yes. But the ultimate commitment is to your wife, your girlfriend, and your family. Um, I'm going to end with this. Uh, well, for maybe not the end, but this is a, uh, a good uh, song to pass along to you. And that is uh, the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, or the Dirt Band. Look it up. Great song. It's called Dance Little Jean. And uh, it's about a wedding, and uh, this guy is singing. He's in the band. He's like, ah, marriage. Ah, who needs this? This is nonsense. Then this little girl comes dancing across the floor and all dressed up, and she's overjoyed, having a great time. And everybody's watching and clapping their hands and, and uh, enjoying the music and watching this delightful little girl. Why is she so happy? Not because it's a party. As the lyrics go, dance, little Jean, this day is for you. Two people you love stood up to say, I do. Dance, little Jean, a prayer that you had was answered today. Your mama's marrying your dad. It's so beautiful. If you are uh, a man and you're, you know, living with your girlfriend and you have a child together or children together, what is, you know, it's going to make those children so happy and that woman so happy and you so happy and God so happy. Talk to her and say, look, I love you. That's obvious. We're, we've been living together for so long. We have children. I love you so much. Let's do it. Let's, let's, let's get married. Okay. And watch her light up in joy. Uh, there's no greater joy than family and love and serving and honoring God by committing yourself to that family and being a real man, okay? That's what being a father is all about, is not just saying I have a kid, but making the commitment, the ultimate commitment and putting the ring on, caring for that child, uh, protecting that child, loving and laughing with that child, disciplining that child as well. Do all of those things, and believe me, you'll be much happier. That's it for this edition of Coffee with the Goose. I'm so glad you joined me again. And I'd love to get your comments, uh, and uh, I want to know what you have to think about what I have just said. And hopefully uh, it rings true with you, and uh, if it uh, prompts you to uh, make a big step in your life, good. Good for you, good for your children, and your wife, soon-to-be wife. Coffee with the Goose. I'll talk to you again soon. Take care.